what's popping y'all it's your girl big daddy jen and this is the second episode of the real feel i know i haven't been posting for a while it's just a lot that's been going on a lot of transitioning a lot of like uncomfortableness being uncomfortable is just the transition between where you are and where you want to be so with that being said we're just gonna jump right in i'm about to like come for people's necks and i oh this is not the nice video, this is not the pity video, this is how, I called it real feel for a reason, so it's about to get real. You know everything that's going on with the Black Lives Matter movement and the protests and everything, and it's just like, it's week three and it's not over. Period! This video, I just wanted to make it to like address my stance on the Black Lives Matter and also use my platform to educate others on the matters of it because I've seen everybody posting about it. I've seen especially Blackout Tuesday, everybody posted their black screen. Everybody's like, wow, this is terrible. I want to target the crowd that is remaining silent on the matters or it's just it, they have a lot to say on social media, but they don't have a lot to say in real life about the matters and it's it's not okay. I want y'all to wake up. They still think this is a joke. They still think this is funny and it's not. There's this social hierarchy that says this is better than this and this is better than this, but we were just conditioned to be that way. Nobody is perfect and nobody goes up over another person. The only person that goes above me is God. So who are you as a human being to depict how my life gets played? How the story of my life, what is my beginning? What is my end? because of the color of my skin people that are choosing to stand silent on this matter people that are choosing to wait for this to pass like come on get it together because y'all so quick to jump on social media when a celebrity fight happens or this sex video came out about this celebrity or any celebrity scandal that has to pertain with someone that's not putting money in your pockets but you're not so you're not quick to jump on what's going on right now and these people are losing their lives simply because of the color of their skin i'm just saying the importance of social media is to interact with others, spread information, and maintain connections with people and grow. So I don't understand why everybody who has a platform is not projecting it. And I'm not just talking about posting. The posts, the posts are good. It's informing others who may not know, but then you have to think about the people that are not really gonna take the time to read what you're posting. I want you to get on your platform and say something because people are more likely to listen to what you have to say rather than reading it off a post that's been shared by millions of people flood it flood flood the social medias with this beat until the point where the people that hate to see it have nothing else to see but it so we want to make it that this is everything that they see because this is serious this is not a game because right now this is how they're looking at it and i'm saying they as in people who don't see the importance of this and i'm not just talking about white people they think that we're gonna get riled up we're gonna have these riots we're gonna have all these protests and we're gonna keep flooding the social medias for you know a couple weeks and then we're gonna die down they're waiting for this to die down so they can go back to doing what they're usually doing which is killing us and is that cool no keep it going keep it going i don't know why people are not acting like the jim crow laws and the civil rights movement was not 50 years ago staying consistent staying on top of it not getting tired and when you are tired continue to go continue to inform people it's not over use your social media i don't think people really know what we're fighting for i think people just see george floyd Am ahmaud arbery brianna taylor and they're just like oh these are lives lost due to police brutality and hate crimes but it's not just that we are tired we are tired of getting everything taken away from us down to our own lives down to our own children lives people are even afraid to have children nowadays because they don't want to bring them into a world like this we already have to face our own eternal issues as the black community that we have to fix and i will touch upon that on another video but we have a bigger enemy out there and it's law enforcement there's people who have power that are getting away with it and I'm not coming for the cops that are doing their job, but the cop that is not checking the next cop in line is just as bad as the cop doing the actions that's hurting us. Even cops are even afraid to wear their uniforms after work because they're afraid that they're gonna get killed. My uniform is the color of my skin and I can't take that off. I don't know if y'all know 
Mass incarceration is the present day slavery. So many of our beautiful black kings and queens are being thrown into jail because they're exercising the 13th Amendment, y'all. Slavery is abolished, but they can get free labor out of us if they put us in jail. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Come on now. The first step to do that, we gotta be two steps ahead and educate yourselves because that's what they fear the most. I made a video before explaining my um, stance on Black Lives Matter and I was so angry in that video. I didn't even get my words across because I was frustrated. I just recently went to a protest and we did an eight minute, 46 second moment of silence for George Floyd. Eight minutes and 46 seconds. George Floyd was on the floor with that officer's knee on his neck. First part about everything is we have to pull out our cameras to get every piece of moment recorded of police brutality, of hate crimes, and it doesn't even do anything for us. They took everything away from us. They took us from our home countries, brought us here to work for them for free for 400 years and then said, oh, your unpaid internship is done. Um, try to make a living for yourself. Um, we're not gonna help you. Yeah, and we're gonna still continue to kill you guys because the government's gonna let us get away with it. And then when we found a way to outsmart them, they would just keep destroying it. It's like, they will never let us see us win. It really starts with education. It's crazy because like there's so much we don't know because our history is taught to us by our own oppressors. Like they're not gonna teach us what really happened. They're not gonna teach us that they try to destroy us to just to let them win and then make us work for them to boost their economy. Another thing I wanna point on is all lives matter. All Lives Matter is the, about the stupidest thing I've ever heard because that's obvious. But it's not like All Lives Matter was started before and then Black Lives Matter was started after as a revolt against All Lives Matter because we're saying Black Lives Matter more than all lives. It's just right now, Black lives are suffering. If it's not the hate crime, it's the sex trafficking, it's the missing Black women that nobody wants to speak on, but I'm not even gonna get into that. So anybody who says all lives matter is usually saying it in a rebuttal of black lives matter. And if you do agree with that, you're stupid. The ignorance is what's killing me out here. People that choose to stay silent, it's because you don't know. They want to get a reaction out of us. They wanted to see the angry black man. They wanted to see the angry black woman, but they didn't want to see the educated one. We got to move smarter, not harder. So what can you do? Because closed mouths are not going to get fed can continue to pro protest because there's power in numbers. When they see down the line that we still protest, they're gonna be like, oh my God. We really gotta protest on defunding the police. I've been reading up on it a lot and defunding the police is the way to go. The, if you read into the budgets that the police get, as opposed to other things that you think we would have a budget for, it's ridiculous. Donate. And donating is like one of the best things you can do. Donate to the families that are hurt, that have lost a mother, a father, a brother, sister, whatever it may be, because of a hate crime. Donate to the organizations that are help supporting this, help funding us. Um, incar a wrongfully incarcerated brothers and sisters out here who can't afford to have a true trial because that's another thing. They wanna keep us in jail because they are gonna keep my, making money off of us, but that's not gonna be the case if we work together. Our young black kings and queens out here, they're like misdirected at such a young age and people could say it's just this generation. You can speak on it. If you have a platform, just by saying something, you're doing something. Like when I was growing up, there was so many after school programs, so many rec recreational centers. There's none. Zip. They're, ta they're slowly taking those away because there's like a sense of there's no need for it or they'd rather be out in the streets. But that's not the case. It's because we don't have enough money because you may have your set of connections. I may have my set of connections, but all these connections are going to get reached if I say something and you say something. And the biggest thing you could do is educate yourself. Read up on it. Talk to somebody who knows. Start a discussion about it. 
because then we can learn how to move smarter, not harder. We all bleed the same. We're all human. We should not have the fear of living as people. The only person we should be fearing is God. And that's a fact. And that's the real feel.